Hi, I'm Paula Mushkevich. I'm the CEO of Secure. This is a cybersecurity company that I have established 13 years ago. Uh, we are placed in four locations right now, so uh, Dubai, Switzerland, New York and Poland. And I'm also a Microsoft Regional Director. Uh, that is a very honorable role that is given by Microsoft to people that are innovative in technologies. When we look into attacks right now and some of the statistics, we are able to see that FBI, for example, summarizes that attacks increase by 300%. Interpol looks into it and they sum it up by 569% of an increase. Also, when we look into the financial sector, we are able to see that based on the 2021, attacks have increased by 1,318%. That is absolutely a huge number showing that ransomware it's definitely on the rise and it's definitely there and it's definitely a threat at the same time when we look at the financial side of the attacks we can see that approximately 80 percent of those are financially motivated so nowadays it's not only information it's not just to destroy the company it's simply to earn money on it and the experience also shows we can hear it in the news that companies sometimes are in a position that the only possibility for them to recover data, at least they think so, is to pay, which is of course not a recommended activity, but sometimes maybe they just want to try it and we don't have a choice. What is important to pay attention to is how not only to prevent ransomware, but also how to stop phishing from getting inside our companies, because this is the number one mean of transportation for ransomware. If we are wondering why companies step into the path of paying the ransom for ransomware for the encrypted data, it's because probably this is their last hope. But of course, there is never, absolutely never, no assurance that you're going to get your data back because you paid. Of course, we are hearing about ransomware business, because we can call it uh, like this right now, growing so much that some of the teams, they even offer a help desk for someone uh, that is about to pay to get their data back. So hackers help this. That's just like happening in, the, in, in this world. Now, funny part about that is that whenever we've got no backup or we have no possibility to recover uh, the data, what you're gonna do? Yeah, that's just the method of surviving. Therefore, we just need to be absolutely sure that our infrastructure is secured properly to even not to step into situations like that. A very important factor of hardening the infrastructure nowadays is to understand the current threats. So for example, if we've got attacks that are based on the passwords, which many companies like, for example, Colonial Pipeline, so the gas pipeline in US, they have been hacked like that just because one user has a simple password is to, of course, use some password protection mechanism. So for that, it's gonna be the multi-factor authentication, which for example, in the Microsoft 365, you can just turn it on with one click. So this is the easiest, the fastest way to, to protect our users' users' passwords. Now, whenever we are thinking about the organizational security, another line that hackers step into is through phishing. So for example, we need to have the good, good anti-spam, anti-phishing filters. We need to understand how phishing works. So for example, if you're getting an email with an attachment, then there is a macro, it could be Excel with macro, for example. Then you are clicking somewhere and so on. Something underneath is executing. Now we've got this underneath part. We've got a couple of ways. For example, you can have a child process running. You can have Win32 API so that it's going to be within the Excel's memory. So for that, we've got actually an easy protection. It's called attack surface reduction rules, which are free as well. And you are able to implement them in a Windows platform to stop this common standard classic methods for hackers to escalate through uh, particularly phishing. So that's another part. Another part, the next line is, and it's all on the endpoint, the next line is to implement whitelisting. So technically, this allow running the code that you don't know. I only know this, this and that, and that is what I can execute. Plus, smartly, I implement also the same rule on the building operating system processes, executables, to make sure that even build in, allowed by default, executables like CertUtil, even PowerShell, are not allowed as well to be running in a malicious context. For example, ransomware could be also in PowerShell. 
So we are allowing the PowerShell to execute. So we should be only allowing it in a certain context so that, for example, PowerShell does not go out through the network. So that comes to another layer, network security. We should not allow processes that we don't know to communicate out to the network, plus the perimeter security and also the whole cloud security, where we are controlling who is actually communicating how, with what kind of frequency and so on. So the smart monitoring comes to place and the quick prevention, quick reaction to, to and prevention to an incident where we are able to uh, analyze that these things are were running on that workstation, that time, this user was engaged, this was a point of entry. The only way we can say it is through the good monitoring. So Secure, our company, uh, it's a great Microsoft partner. We have a very nice cooperation uh, because we, we look into the same direction. So Microsoft right now had uh, in statistics the biggest revenue in terms of security solutions and they're investing in security a lot. So we do, but we do it more from the independent perspective. We do pen testing. We do verify whether the solutions are implemented well, what are the potential misconfigurations that could be used by the hackers, and we do provide incident response and forensics and education. So when the Microsoft solutions are in place, for example, Sentinel in terms of central monitoring, we can sub in to help customers to analyze the different logs and build reactions, even automatic ones, to the potential incident that they might be experiencing. So what is important is monitoring, but also testing security regularly to verify whether the new solutions introduced are opening up a new gates for the hackers. So Jinsec, it's such a great place, first of all, to exchange experiences. In cybersecurity, experience is everything and sharing, as we say, is caring, which means that uh, everybody's got different experiences from their organizations. They have experienced, for example, this kind of an attack, the other organization, different one. But what also matters is the reaction, what kind of tools we are using to say that to the other person that, look, I used that tool or I used the system for the discovery. You may also try it. It actually uh, decreases the downtime down, down for our organization to a certain, certain amount of minutes, maybe. So these kind of statements, they might come from the other people. And that's why Joysec is one of my favorite events because there are so many people with great experiences here just to, just to have nice conversations.